Um, I'd say I've probably waited nine, uh, not nine, yeah, about nine months to finally get to say this. But everybody, welcome to UL Comedy Society at the Scholars. Right. Now comes the awkward part. Because starting a stand-up comedy is like starting a conversation. And I fucking, I'm not good conversationalist, I don't like saying, let the down here. It's, I can't handle it as well because it's a comedian, man. Right? But the awkward thing about starting a stand-up comedy set is, beside this idiot talking, is that it's sort of like a conversation. The awkward thing about starting a stand-up comedy set is it's an awful lot like starting a conversation. And I hate conversation starting. It's awkward, even small talk. I don't like it. Until this summer. And then the Irish people made their greatest invention for hundreds of years. They invented two words, these two beautiful words, and you could use them at any moment, and you could have a conversation with anybody in the country, and you could make it last for a couple of minutes. These words are slain, girl. <laughs> you say slain girl to anybody, you're going, you're rolling. Before, two Irish men were just running to each other and he's talking about the weather, it was weather talking. Oh sure, that was mad weather yesterday, huh? Oh yeah, one minute, oh, it was, she was fair wet, but then, you know, it was fair hot too. <laughs> and now, you know, all they talk about slain girl, like, oh, did you see that slain girl? Oh yeah, she was fair wet, but you know, I was hot too. <laughs> but everybody has a different thing when they when they hear her saying girl slaw saying girl for the first time. This guy was so happy to talk at the start of the show, so I'm gonna ask you, what did you first think when you saw saying girl? What was your reaction? Right? Is she legal? Is she legal? Um, I don't know, like, I'm pretty sure blowjobs in public are always illegal. <laughs> so they're like, oh, he's 22, he can be given a blowjob on the streets whenever he wants. If that's the case, then, um, good night, uh, enjoy your day. <laughs> but, um, anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, so what do you think? What do you think you saw saying, girl? I don't know. What's that? Well, penis in the mouth? It's a blowjob. Uh, women give them to men. Basically, they enjoy it. It's, it's nice. <laughs> we'll go over to the girls because they're all awkward. Okay, girls, how's it going, girls? Oh, I'm going to go away from the girls. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to go from here. Okay, so, um, that was probably an omen. Just fuck off. <laughs> Uh, so, um, what did you girls think when you saw Slaying Girl? Oh, when you saw Slaying Girl, what did you think? What came to your mind, first of all? Like, we've never watched that. You, what, you heard about it? No. <laughs> okay, well, that was loads of fun, that was a good interaction we had there, lots of great response out of it. Um, going to a different group of girls. Christine Mappy in the back. What did Christine McNamara think? She's a keeper. <laughs> Keep in a cage, maybe, or some kind of jail facility, maybe. You see, I had a completely unique, and I will say this with certainty, a unique experience when I saw Slanger, well, when I heard Slanger for the first time. Because it, it may seem like a bit of a tangent, but uh, me and my mom, we have a good relationship. Uh, she's kind of quite useful in her hobbies and stuff. So for Christmas, I want to get something really good. So I got her tickets to Eminem in Sling. <laughs> so you can see the moral dilemma I had when someone was like, some girl was giving head in Sling. It was a gamble, but I was like, okay, fuck, I gotta know, I gotta know. I looked at it, phew, it wasn't my mom. <laughs> So that was a positive, but you know, it's a big, it was a big news story, and my mom was there, but it was also a blow down public, that's what was the news of the story. So, I kind of like, how, how am I going to bring it up, you know, we, gotta, we have to, you know, it's the elephant in the room, how, what's a nice slide funnel where we can mention slaying girl happened, 
and move on from it. Um, I, in hindsight, didn't make the best choice. I started to call her Slay Mom. <laughs> Slay Mom, what's for dinner? Slay Mom, can I get a lift to school, you know, college, all that shit? Um, didn't go down well. But getting back to Slaying Girl, I think Slaying Girl, for all the muddy blowjobs that girl gave, she got a little bit too much harder of a rap. Because one thing I'm hearing around is, oh, she's disgusting. She gave us blowjob in front of 20,000 people. <laughs> no, she fucking didn't. She gave a blowjob at Slaying. She wasn't the fucking support act. <laughs> Pretty sure it was in a corner somewhere. The MC didn't come on and go, Oh, hey guys, okay, Slim's back there, he's ready to go on. But now we've got your support act. Here she comes out. Okay, she's gonna blow you guys away. Oh, okay. okay, she was a semi finalist on this year's Brains Got Talent. Oh, Slim go! And then everyone got like, I'm oh, crazy. I think you're gonna go a little bit more crazy for our first act here this evening. He's a, a veteran of the stage. He's been touring all over during the summer. He's been in Galway. I've seen he's been doing some great stuff. He's here to entertain you. Please make all that loud, lovely noise for Paul Michael Gorgon! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Michael, and I'm not a George Michael tribute act. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> I mean, I have to give up, you know, like, don't get me wrong, I mean, the pay was great, the exposure was a bit much. You know, when I came back to college, I realized that, you know, I do actually have one thing in common with George Michael. Both of our diets are largely sausage based. <laughs> myself as a modern man. You know, I, I, I drink cocktails, for example. No more. <laughs> but you know, the one thing I have to admit about cocktails is that they are a girl's drink. Now, I know a couple of you are in the audience are thinking, you know, it's the teens, Paul. We don't talk like that no more. Boys can drink whatever they want. And blow dudes. <laughs> but you know, that's not what I mean. What I mean is that cocktails were invented by men to get women drunk without them noticing. <laughs> it's like a classy form of day rate. <laughs> You'll go up to a girl on a night out, you know, just at the start of the night when she'll be on cocktails and she'll go, this is a girl's night. We don't want no dicks around here. You go out, ladies and gentlemen, and 15 minutes later, you're out there and she's gonna be like, on the dance floor, oh no, we can dance away, but no, no, no. Oh, I'm just gonna grab your waist, but no, no, no. <laughs> Five minutes later, I'm just gonna grind your crotch, but no, no, no. <laughs> you wait around five minutes, lads, and I guarantee you'll get some variation of, I want your dick in me now! <laughs> Don't believe me that cocktails are a girl's drink. Just look at the name. Both cinnamon. Uh, both. This is a really tough sentence, by the way. <laughs> both syllables are synonyms for something that just belongs inside a woman. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of taking advantage of women, uh, that Fifty Shades of Grey thing got a bit out of hand, didn't it? <laughs> Jesus. They, like, I know approve, ladies and gentlemen, just check my internet history. <laughs> but, um, you know, but the thing is, they started reading in pubs, or in, you know, cafes and everything, you know, and I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but the last thing I need to know when I'm trying to relax is that there are three middle-aged moist vaginas around me. <laughs> attitude towards it as well. I mean, you know, people didn't care. The managers didn't do anything about it. But I took on you porn for five minutes. <laughs> and suddenly I'm the sex offender. 
you know, when I was like setting up this set, I, I didn't know, like, there, there's no real easy way to segue off of, you know, a joke where you say middle-aged moist vaginas. Because <laughs> if you're talking to someone and you say middle-aged moist vaginas, that conversation is over. <laughs> Speaking of segues, <laughs> I turned 23 last week, and you know, it, it sucks, you know? I mean, mainly because, you know, as everyone knows, nobody likes you when you're 23. The, but, you know, I enjoy being 22. I really enjoy being happy, free, confused, and lonely at the same time. <laughs> It was miserable and magical. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Tonight's the night we forget about the deadlines. It's time. Oh, don't all look at me like that. You don't know about me. <laughs> but I bet you want to. <laughs> But no, uh, it does say being 23, I feel like I'm kind of getting on, you know, that 48 go conquer lifestyle does catch up with you. <laughs> I mean, my friends now, it's gotten to the point where my friends, they call me a functional alcoholic. Now, I will admit, I am quite fond of the drink, but I wouldn't go as so far as to call myself functional. <laughs> I, I spend most of my days at home on the couch, watching Jeremy Coyle. <laughs> Can in one hand, dick in the other. <laughs> That's a bit generous. <laughs> Can I talk now? Sorry. Uh, but no, I mean, because YOLO, I suppose. <laughs> oh, people hate YOLO. It's mainly because idiots always say it's just like, I'm just eating my cereal. YOLO! <laughs> I just ate a jalapeno sandwich! YOLO! I just took a really, really crap shit. <laughs> Hashtag, my ass now works. <laughs> Hashtag YOLO! <laughs> but no, I mean, like, I don't hate YOLO. I actually think it's great, you know? I mean, it instills in everyone's, you know, mind that you do only live once. It's very clever atheist propaganda, really. <laughs> I mean, That's a great I mean, you think about it, I mean, you do only live once, and I think it's a nice message, you know? I think, you know, you only live once, and you should live life to the fullest. By downing that double vodka Jaeger bomb, bro! Oh, man. No, but, you know, I am an atheist, you know, and it's not the most popular thing to say, even now, in Ireland. And you may hate me, but it ain't no lie. Ba, ba, ba. I don't really want it. Okay, don't want to say it. <laughs> but uh, no, I uh, I'm just gonna take a second here now to remember my next joke. <laughs> I'm gonna break. No, um, I I've really been trying very hard to lose weight lately. I know it shows, <laughs> but um. You know, I, it's not really helped by those people who come up to you and say, you are what you eat, Paul. You are what you eat. Now, I don't think it's too much of a stretch for you to imagine that I'm quite fond of fast food. And what is fast food? It's fast, it's delicious, and it fills you up, ladies. <laughs> I don't think I have any problem with that, but then I thought about it a bit further. I have also been known to eat out in exotic bedrooms. <laughs> Depending on your, or your vocabulary, ladies and gentlemen, either makes me a pussy or a cunt. <laughs> oh, Jesus, no, but like, I, I really decided to clean my act up mainly when I saw this YouTube ad. And YouTube, like, targets you with advertising after looking at your cookies, which are basically showing what you've been online with all the time. Now, I was on YouTube for six hours straight, and then I got this message. Sorry for being so direct. But you've been overweight for quite some time now. <laughs> your friends and family worry about you. <laughs> because you're a fat asshole who scrolls on YouTube for six hours in a fucking day, you fat fuck. <laughs> but like, I, 
I actually have a video on YouTube now, and I'm, I'm quite proud of it. I have 250,000 views for a video of myself and my friend named Gay Chicken. <laughs> gay Chicken, for those of you who don't know, ladies and gentlemen, is when two guys who are not gay, not gay, <laughs> lean in for a kiss, and the first one to pull out loses. Oh. But, um, you know, I, I looked at the uh, views, the view count for different nations in this, and the one on the top was Saudi Arabia, <laughs> where it is technically illegal to be gay. But then again, it's not gay to watch two guys not kiss, right? I mean, I'll leave you with this cautionary tale. I, I used my YouTube fame to uh, try and impress a woman once. <laughs> but apparently the phrase, I've gone viral, wasn't quite that bad. <laughs>